makers of Johnson's Wax present The House by the Side of the Road, featuring Martelli's Orchestra and Vocal Ensemble, and starring Tony Wan, beloved philosopher and friend to millions of radio listeners. Are you listening? Hmm? I'll build a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Here we are, friends, at the house by the side of the road. It is the home of John Whitcomb and his wife, Mary. John's name is still remembered on Broadway, but advancing years and the love of home have caused him to retire to this enchanted cottage for which he has saved all his life. This afternoon, he has invited the townspeople to visit him, and the broad lawn is filled with camp chairs, which are fast being taken as the guests arrive. John and Mary and their daughter, Glory, are standing on the steps watching the crowd assemble. And believe me, it looks as if the whole town is turning out this afternoon. Well, well, it seems as if our first party is going to be a big success, Mary. <laughs> Everything you ever do is a big success, John, dear. Oh, Daddy, I'm so excited. It's just like the first night of a regular play. <laughs> it certainly is, Glory. Oh, but Daddy, dear, don't you think you ought to say a word of greeting and tell the audience what it's all about? Oh, all right, honey. You see, you'd make a good stage manager, you would. <laughs> Welcome, my friends. Welcome to the house by the side of the road. Now, I suppose you all wondered what John Whitcomb was up to this time when he asked you to come here today. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my friends, every once in a while I get a little lonesome for the theater. As I said to Mary, Mary, I said, let's have a theater of our very own and give a show once a week. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, our lawn here slopes down to meet the steps leading up to the veranda just the way a regular theater auditorium slopes down to meet the stage. And our broad veranda makes a mighty fine stage, don't you think? Hmm? Hmm. And when you're going to give a show, it's a good idea to think about talent. Right here in our own town, I've come across some really fine artists. Then, too, we usually have weekend visitors from the theater. So here we have the talent and the place, and you've been good enough to come and supply the audience. You know, I've never faced an audience in my whole life that I love as much as I love you all. Now I want you to listen to some great music. My good friend Marcelli, in honor of this first show of ours, has made a special medley arrangement of some of my favorite songs. A few of them date back to the time when I myself was playing on Broadway. I love those tunes for the memories they awaken in me. Let us hear them now, Marcelli. <laughs>
promise that by and by there's gonna be a great day. Gabriel will warn you, the world he born, you will hear it born. It's not far away, hold up your hands and say, there's gonna be a great day. like that. And now we're going to hear from a little lady who is like one of our family. You all know Gina Vanna, our own little life. Here you do. She came to us not so many years ago from her sunny home in Italy, and in her voice she brings us all the sunshine from her country. All right, Vanna, come and shine for us. <laughs> Sounded like that thrush you nest in our roof tree over there. But now where's Ronnie and Van? Right there, John, on the side, waiting to go on. Oh, sure enough. Hello, boy. Here we come. Come on, come on, boys. You're next. Well, my friends, we have two young fellows champing at the bit just raring to go. I suppose you'll all recognize Ronnie and Van from the general store in the village. But for tonight, they're two of the best harmonizers in the world. They <laughs> just listen to them go operatic. <laughs> We have no banana. The man that always used to be banana. But now it's out fruit from a tree. Yes, banana. we have no banana. banana. Very cheap. Like we gather around each time I yell. We got lots of banana. banana. I sing in each marketplace how they race to the show. The show. Popular guy, how they sigh when I go. I go. Look, 
price of Alpina store. They're jealous because I'm selling more. Banana. Banana. A song of love I don't compose. Depend upon each tree that grows. Banana. We got lots of bananas. We'll buy everything we need. I'm a bunny in my song. We'll buy, we'll buy the best bananas for the money. Just ten cents, just ten cents of ours. Romance fills the air when I start singing my song. Hello, Mary, darling. I thought I'd find you here in the living room. I just came in to get my breath. Oh, it's going so well. You're giving this town the time of its life, John. <laughs> it's like old times. Bringing the theater right up to our front door like this. And all those happy faces on the lawn. You know, they make me feel mighty good. You always did know what people need in this world, John. You're just chock full of love and understanding. And you, Mary... All the years you've traveled with me, I've always known that much of the success I had in the theater was because of your understanding and love. Well, I, I must have learned it from you, John, because that's the only way you know. Oh, you're a darling. Oh, but goodness, here I am, making love to you when I should get out there and keep the show going. Come on, mother. All right, dear. You know, I'm enjoying this whole thing as much as anybody here. Now, my friends, I want to tell you about the big treat of the afternoon. Emery Darcy, famous young baritone, is spending the weekend with us, and he's going to sing for you. Come on, Darcy. Hey, you never had a more appreciative audience in your life. <laughs> and sing for us? Thank you. I hope you'll let me down. I'd love it. Mm -hmm. I would say, Mr. Whitcomb, I just know the audience is waiting to hear something from you. Oh, Aren't no, you no, both? No, no. Hello. Hello. Oh, no. Well, uh, that's mighty nice of you, my friend. Thank you very much. Friends, 
What a marvelous word that is. You know, if I were to be given three wishes, I'd say give me friendship, more friendship, and more friendship, because it is the most glowing emotion in life. It spreads itself like a cozy fire, giving comfort to all who come within its radiance. You know, I'm sorry for those poor souls who have never learned the meaning of true friendship. As the poet Sam Walter Foss once said, there are hermit souls that live withdrawn in the place of their self-content. There are souls like the stars that dwell apart in a cellulous firmament. There are pioneer souls that blaze their paths where highways never ran. But let me live in a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I see from my house by the side of the road, by the side of the highway of life, the men who press with the ardor of hope and the men who are faint with the strife. But I turn not away from their smiles nor the tears, both parts of an infinite plan. Let me live in a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Let me live in my house by the side of the road where the race of men go by. They are good, they are bad, they are weak, they are strong, wise, foolish. <laughs> so am I. And why should I sit in the corner seat or hurl the cynic band? Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. My, I wish I'd had a chance to hear John Whitcomb in the old days when he was on the stage. Mm, so do I. I think John and Mary are about the finest folks in the world. Mary hasn't grown a day older looking since she's moved here. She certainly knows how to manage this big house. Never seems to work hard at it either. I wish I could keep my floors and furniture polished the way hers are. Everything in her house is always bright and shining. Yet most of her things date back a good many years. You know the secret, don't you? Why, no. What is it? Well, Mary uses Johnson's wax on almost every inch of her house. A regular wax method of housekeeping, she calls it. <laughs> she says it's cut her housework in half. In half? Mm hmm She never has to scrub her floors. She just dusts them off. And she says she never has to worry about her furniture and woodwork getting dull and smudgy looking since she started waxing it. Well, if Mary Whitcomb uses Johnson's wax in her house, I'm certainly going to get some of it tomorrow and begin waxing my own floors and furniture. Mary always knows the most economical and satisfactory way of doing things. Pardon me, Mrs. Watson. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but even a mere man like myself can appreciate the difference between floors and furniture that are polished with Johnson's wax and those that are not wax polished. If I were a married man, believe me, my ambition would be to live in a house that was as cheerful and shining as this house is. All would say, look, there go Dorothy and Glory strolling toward the garden. Well, I'm so glad you could come today, Mr. Dyson. And so am I. I wish I never had to go back. This is real living in peace and contentment. How I wish you could stay. Then we'd have beautiful music all the time with you and Bonnie. What a voice she has. And what a lovely girl. Yes, indeed. I've grown to love her like a sister. She's lived with us ever since her father died, you know. Excuse me, Miss Laurie. But did you want to know if you'll go in the kitchen and help her with a... Oh, of course, Horace. Right away. By the way, have you heard the news, Miss Laurie? No. Mr. Whitcomb is going to let me announce us a supper. Oh, that's fine, Horace. Sure, it's... Well, I'm going to make a speech. Oh, no, Horace, just an odd supper. Sure, I might get to be, be, be a great, great big actor some, someday. <laughs> you, imagine that? you know, I got a big bill, a big bill, a bill, I got talent. <laughs> and believe me, I'm not going to hide my bushel under a bushel under. <laughs> I'm not going to hide what I got, no. <laughs> oh, Horace, you'll be great. <laughs> yes, my ma'am. And but 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 Yes, sir. She says if I start to talk on the stage, folks will be, be there all night. <laughs> well, it's a twinkle, twinkle. Oh, well, tell her I'll be there right away. Right. Horace, he's the gardener. And just between you and me and his son, I think he's in love with the bee. I guess you can't keep love out of an atmosphere like this. Uh, how old is that? Speaking of love? Well, to answer a plain question, plainly, she's just 20. 
And to add a little embroidery, she isn't in love with anybody. Thanks. What a wise little lady you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's wander back and listen to the show. Nothing like what, Constable? There's no law against having a good time, yeah, is there? There is, too. Now, you step in the house with me. <laughs> All right, Constable. Always glad to have a friendly chat. Uh, go on, boys, with the music. <laughs> Constable, that was no way to do, interrupting the show. Now, now, my good woman. This is men folks' business. <laughs> it's all right, Mary. Now, what's so wrong about giving a show, Constable? Well, it ain't constitutional. It ain't what? Hey, there ain't nothing in the statutes of our town that says a man can make a theater out of his front lawn and a monkey out of me. <laughs> now, really, Constable, don't you think... No, it... I don't. <laughs> the lady's vigilance committee was to hold a meeting today at the town hall, and poor Mrs. Rattler, the president, is a-sitting up there billowing all over the platform. But there can't be no meeting, because all the folks is here. Well, now, why don't you go down and ask Mrs. Rattler to come along up and join us and have some fun? Fun? Sure. Huh. You don't know Mrs. Rattler. And this town doesn't need a vigilance committee, Constable. Say, hey, listen, if you give people some healthy entertainment once in a while, they aren't likely to get into trouble. Well, now, uh, what kind of a crazy place are you running here? Hey, what do you mean, crazy kind of place? Now, now, Mary, don't get your feathers up. Well, I'll tell you, for one thing... That sign you got outside there says, uh, Aunt Mary's cookie jar, take one. Well, that's crazy, ain't it? Why, there isn't any harm in Aunt Mary's cookies. The children know about them for miles around. And, and, and now you've struck the craziest idea yet, hmm. giving a show right on your front porch. I'm going to call a meeting tomorrow morning. And, uh, well, I guess i got to leave now. I ain't had my supper yet with all this Tom foolishness. Better take a handful of cookies on the way out, Constable. Yes, better. <laughs> It'll sort of keep you going till you get your supper. <clears throat> well, I, uh, might as well take one, I guess, as long as they're here. I never heard of such darn foolishness in all my life.
Daddy said to announce supper now. Okay, b -b -b Buttercup. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I got an announcement, an announcement. Uh, <laughs> well, I got it to announce. Ladies, I got something, something to tell you. Sorry, but well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a speech yes, coming. Well, what? Well, 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 supper, Daddy. Okay. A friend of Rome was a concussion man. <laughs> the man, the man that we come watch me to proclaim, that is, he says to me to tell you that there is a supper waiting to be had around at the side, the side, the side of the house. <laughs> Step right over there. Eat and to drink and be, 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 be merry, folks. But tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is <laughs> it's, well, it's, it's another day. Boy, well, wasn't that a dandy? Well, say, that's a very fine speech, Horace, and thank you. All right, friend. Come right along. And help yourself. I only wish I could stay, Mr. Whitcomb, but I have a long drive ahead of me, and I'm afraid I'll have to be on my way. Oh, I'm sorry, Harlow. Yeah, I'll walk to the gate with you. Fine. I want to show you my car. Hmm, new one? No, same old car, but it sure looks like you. Uh, see that wax polish? Did it myself. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's it. Beautiful polish, mm -hmm. Was it hard to do? No, easy. First, I cleaned the car with Johnson's Auto Cleaner, the best cleaner I ever used. A liquid, you know. Mm -hmm. Dries to a white powder in a few minutes' time, and you just wipe it off, and all the film and dirt wipe right off, too. And it doesn't hurt the finish in any way. <laughs> well, sounds easy. Why, it's a cinch. Then you go over the car with Johnson's Auto Wax to protect the surface and keep it shining. Why, that wax fairly sheds dust and keeps the finish looking like new. Well, you can see for yourself. Gee. <laughs> I'll have to try some Johnson's auto wax on my own car. You know, Harlow, Mary has been picking on me lately for letting the car get so dull and shabby looking. Women are fussy about their cars, just as fussy as they are about keeping their houses clean and bright, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they write about it, too. Well, Harlow, be sure to come to our entertainment next Sunday, will you? Oh, I'll be here, all right. Uh, fine, we're going to have a great show. Vanna and Darcy have promised to be here again, and Bonnie and Van are already rehearsing a new stunt for next Sunday. Everybody is welcome. You'll find the last thing always hanging out at the house by the side of the road. So come along, for the time shall be filled with music, and the cares that infest the day shall fold their tents like the Arabs, and the silently steal away. And so goodbye. All is well. All is well. show this afternoon were the numbers Hallelujah from Hit the Deck, Giannina Mia from Firefly, Love Thy Neighbor from We're Not Dressing, Great Day from the show of the same name, and two numbers from Naughty Marietta, I'm Falling in Love with Someone, and Tramp, Tramp, Tramp. The House by the Side of the Road is presented by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Harlow Wilcox speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. The Chicago Daily News Station, WMAQ.